You are watching France 24. Let's go live now to Kiev, where Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is speaking. Let's listen to what he has to say about the crisis with Russia. This is a violation of all bilateral agreements and also the Security Council resolutions passed by the UN. Clearly, it is an unprecedented challenge for Ukraine, but also for the world. Today in Ukraine, the future of European security is being decided. Ukraine is an important part of that security, and Europe cannot allow such a tragic error to be repeated. For example, the error that took place in Georgia in 2008. We must put up sanctions for this act of aggression by Russia against Ukraine, including the stop of Nord Stream 2 oil pipeline. Line. We count on the support of all of our partners to support our defensive forces and to make our economy more stable. The, uh, Ukraine is very uh, thankful to Estonia for helping us with weapons, in particular javelins, and installations for the army. We have also talked about the Crimean platform, and the president of Estonia supports our humanitarian summit, which helps the Crimeans and is working for the end of the occupation of Crimea. We would like to thank Estonia for their support. In our aspirations to join EU and NATO, and we hope that this year will be the year that decisions will be made, specific decisions will be made, decisions that are needed here in Ukraine. We need to increase cooperation, and I am convinced, Mr. President, we will hear more about Nisha Schmigel, the prime, from the prime, Nisha Schmigel, the Prime Minister, in this regard. We hope to welcome more Estonian businesses in Ukraine. We invite them to participate in the economic development of our country, in particular with regard to computer sciences in Ukraine. We also talked about digitalization so that investment funds can work more effectively with regard to security in cyberspace. Ukraine and Estonia want to have high-level bilateral relations, and this visit from the president is a confirmation of that desire. Thank you very much once again for coming to see us. It's a very important visit at this very important, this significant moment for a Ukrainian society and for the independence of our country. Mr. President, journalists, we stand united with Ukraine. We will not walk away. We will continue to support you in every possible way. I praise the Ukrainian leaders who, despite constant provocation, remain calm and express willingness to solve this conflict peacefully. Russia must end the intolerable provocations, stop fueling the conflict, which has been ongoing for eight years. Moscow should immediately and unconditionally withdraw its forces from Ukraine's territory and its immediate state. We strongly condemn all military and hybrid actions against Ukraine. We regret that despite diplomatic efforts, there are no signals of willingness to de-escalate, quite the opposite. The build-up of Russian forces continues, including in Belarus. I align myself with everyone who wished we would have a way to secure peace through the force of diplomacy and dialogue. Indeed, it is a decisive moment in the European history. 
President Putin will answer to the future generations for his violent actions. But also we, European and Western leaders, have a responsibility to step up to our values, our commitment to Europe unite, united and at peace. We regret every single life lost in this conflict. It is our duty to protect our common values and the democracy we all helped to build. A threat to Ukraine is a threat to the security of Europe. The minimum we can do is to step up our practical support to Ukraine, which Estonia has done and will continue to do so. In the EU, we will deliver on a massive package of sanctions and do so swiftly and decisively. But most importantly, we must keep the door for EU and NATO open for Ukraine. And we must have concrete next steps for further cooperation and integration. We know you will continue to value democracy and remain on path of reforms. Eventually, we will welcome you as a member of the European Union. You belong in Europe. We support Ukraine's independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. We remain fully committed to the policy of non-recognition of illegal annexion of Ukraine's territories. Ukraine has a right to defend its borders and independence, and we continue helping Ukraine to build its military capabilities to stand against the aggression. Thank you. Thank you. Шановні журналісти, панове президенте, мають можливість відповісти на пару запитань. А, будь ласка, четвертий канал. У мене питання і до Володимира Олександровича, і до президента Естонії. Почну з українського президента. Пане Володимире, скажіть, будь ласка, зважаючи на офіційне ведення російських військ в Ордло, чи можна це вважати наступом Росії на Україну? І в контексті цього, чи буде впроваджуватися в Україні воєнний стан? І хочеться почути ще ваші за запитання. Доброго дня. Хау. Do you think it would be possible to expel them from these territories? Thank you very much for this question. We can see here that there is an offensive with regard to Ukraine's sovereignty and the territorial integrity. I received a request from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to examine the possibility of cutting off diplomatic relations between Russia and Ukraine. Since the most recent press conference, I will definitely be studying that question and many other questions to see what we can do to react to this escalation from Russia. We believe that it is an escalation. And we have understood that it is a legal attack as well, which has also excited the different activist forces that are found in these territories these the so-called separatist territories. This is not the first time we've been confronted with such a problem. These issues must be resolved through dialogue. We are ready to sit down and negotiate. And Russia knows this very well. Not only Russia knows this, but over the past few months, we have carried out consultations with all of the leaders of the EU, the United States, the Great Britain, Germany, France, and so forth. And we have uh, engaged or proposed many types of formats of dialogues, dialogues that included Russia. And we got the answer yesterday. And you can see that the answer that we got from Russia is that, well, it's an answer that we have to react to. We have to defend our sovereignty. We have to defend our country. 
Ще друга частина вашого питання, будь ласка, повторіть. Про військовий стан і про військовий стан. Це дуже дуже просто. Це питання, яке зрозуміло. Ми віримо в те, що... With regard to martial law, I can tell you that. Потужною. We firmly believe that there will not be a large-scale war against Ukraine, and there will not be a major escalation made by Russia. But if this were to occur, despite what we hope and believe, in that case, yes, we would have to call on martial law. A second question. Does the recognition of these republics close the door to diplomacy? Sanctions. And of course, uh, it's not a complete end of a diplomacy, but uh, it's definitely we try to continue uh, to uh, not to negotiate, but to talk to uh, to the Russian side, because the main issue here is if Putin doesn't care about the Ukrainians, he should think about Russians and uh, their fate, because the war and the aggression is not uh, not the way one country should uh, should go. Ещё запитання від MTV, будь ласка, там в самому кінці. Okay, yeah, wait, wait for your mic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have two questions. First, to goes to uh, President Alar Karis. I am from Finland, Finnish MTV channel. Um, okay, you said, uh, Mr. President, earlier that uh, you want NATO to secure and uh, for, uh, with more fighters in Estonian airspace. Are you afraid that uh, the Baltic countries are next in Putin's list? Thank you for the question. Um, first of all, I'm not afraid of anything. And the second is, uh, it's not a question of Baltic states or, or any other uh, NATO member. If things escalate, it's the war against NATO, not against Estonia or Latvia or any other country. So this is one should keep in mind. Okay, and the next question goes to President Zelensky. You also asked uh, some help from fin Finnish government. Uh, the situation has changed very rapidly now. What, what kind of help you need most at the moment? And what, what is your opinion that the non-NATO non countries like Finland and Sweden, how we should react to this current situation? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> You're watching France 24. We've just been listening to that press conference between the Ukrainian leader and the leader of Estonia, who is visiting Kiev and already a pre planned trip there to Ukraine. But as you can imagine, the current tensions between Russia and Ukraine are definitely dominating that press conference. So, France 24's Doug Herbert's been listening in to that with me as well. Doug, a lot of very strong support, first of all, from the Estonian president. Yeah, it's not surprising that the Estonian president, one of the, the three leaders of the three Baltic states, which were former Soviet republics, now members of the EU since 2004, would be standing there uh, on this particular morning, uh, momentous morning, uh, showing solidarity uh, with Ukraine. Uh, the Baltic leaders, uh, Estonia, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, they perhaps know better uh, than anyone else or as well as anyone else, uh, what it is like to be on the front lines of uh, Russia, uh, having been occupied by the Soviet Union for uh, a good deal of their history until they got their independence, declared their independence in the early 90s. Um, they are obviously more hardline uh, against Russia and against Putin than a lot of their fellow leaders uh, in Europe in Western Europe even. And so while at a time when NATO and uh, the U.S. Uh, and Europe have been showing solidarity in their response, have been trying to pre pre prevent, uh, present a very strong, solid united front against Vladimir Putin, uh, perhaps no one has shown a more solid front than the than Estonia, uh, Latvia, and Lithuania. So they're basically there at this moment to to send a simple message. And, we, and, and you know, we basically heard the president not just condemning um, condemning what's going on, but reminding the world that this the, the buildup, the escalation uh, of Russian forces, which we've been seeing for now days, weeks, and months, uh, is continuing. It's not over. This is an escalation in progress. Uh, the Baltics 
he's playing the role of the messenger of let's have no illusions here. Uh, let's have no illusions about what the intentions of Vladimir Putin are. Let's have no uh, illusions about what his ultimate goal is. Uh, this is not the moment to waver. This is not the moment to start to so show fissures in the alliance. This is not the moment for half measures. So um, he's right now trying to tread a very, very difficult diplomatic line, but mainly there to show support. To, to showcase that support of not just him but his fellow Baltic leaders with Zelensky, who finds himself not just between a rock and a hard place, but in an almost impossible position right now. Zelensky came in as, a, as an inexperienced leader, a former TV personality who actually played the role of a teacher who accidentally becomes Ukrainian president. He was almost a joke when he first stepped into the role. But he has, much to many people's surprise, shown a, a very sober, clear-minded head throughout this crisis, um, trying to toggle between uh, what he saw versus the alarmism of the United States, and yet uh, a very uh, being very cognizant of not wanting to do anything that is going to provoke Russia, or more importantly, to panic his compatriots. So trying to keep the lid on panic mongering, scaremongering among his compatriots, yet at the same time recognizing that, yes, they do face a threat, and they have to be ready for it, and sending a message to the allies. We need your help now more than ever, and we need you to be concerted in sending us that support in our hour of need. Hmm. And the Ukrainian and the Estonian leaders, they're speaking in Kiev as there's been a session going on in the Russian parliament. Doug, you were keeping an eye on that, too, just before this began. Tell us it, about that. It is fascinating. I mean, I have to say the word fascinating again. This was Duma TV. The Duma is the lower house of Russian parliament, um, and it's sort of like the parliamentary channel here. But uh, the messages are quite different. Uh, and it was a succession of speakers basically reacting on what many of them call the symbolic historic morning. Uh, one of the speakers uh, basically likened Zelensky. Uh, you had a lot of references to Hitler and Nazi Germany and fascism laced throughout the speeches of these of the lawmakers this morning. Um, you had one deputy likening what Zelensky is doing, because he's the ultimate source of all sin and evil, a provocateur in this whole thing, um, to a child playing with mass matches and warning him that no, the fire squad is not going to come to your rescue anytime soon. He also said today, February 22nd, uh, marks the day the establishment of a new world order. He, he said that to the deputies. And then at the very end of his speech, he said again, February 22nd, he, he compared it to May 9th. What is May 9th? May 9th, there's no more day that's more symbolic on the Russian calendar than May 9th. It is Victory Day. Victory marking, commemorating the surrender of Nazi Germany at the end of World War II in 1945. Um, so really what they are likening this to is uh, basically Hitler surrendering to, to the forces of good, Hitler in this case uh, being Volod uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. So it's the, the rhetoric and the, the, the narrative coming out of the Russian parliament this morning literally is in a parallel universe uh, from what we were hearing in this press conference. And it gives a sense of the great gulf and divide. I think um, if more people were actually to sit down and listen to that rhetoric, they might and it's grim to say this, they might actually lose faith in the ability to actually connect right now with Putin or anyone around him in his circle um, on any level, because it's really locked in a bubble, as I would see it, a bubble fed by years and decades of misinformation and disinformation and really a trumped up narrative of false history. All right, Doug, thanks so much for that. Uh, we're going to actually go now uh, to Kiev, uh, where France 24's regional correspondent Gulliver Craig is standing by. Uh, Gulliver, uh, just tell us a bit more what you are hearing from where you are about the actual situation on the ground, particularly in eastern Ukraine. Uh, well, I've um, just seen the reports coming in from the Ukrainian armed forces this morning. They've done so re two reports so far, and it looks like fighting's going on all along the front line. I mean, it looks like there was a sort of a peak on uh, Saturday or Sunday over the weekend, and today it's slightly less intense than it has been. But clearly, I mean, basically, it's still going on and all along the front line, and two more Ukrainian soldiers have been reported killed. Volodymyr Zelensky, in his um, what he's saying publicly at the moment does seem to be still saying that Ukrainians should stay calm. Um, he isn't like crying out, this is an invasion, this is an invasion, but he is saying 
as he just said in the press conference with the Estonian president, technically speaking, from a legal point of view, the invasion has started and he is clearly calling on the West to apply sanctions starting from now. He said today that he expected a strong response to come even today from all of the various Western leaders that he spoke to last night after uh, Vladimir Putin's speech. And Gulliver, uh, the Ukrainian leader, also said, don't wait until things escalate to impose sanctions. So it's true he is telling people to stay calm, but also there is some sense of urgency. What does the feeling seem to be like there in Kiev as all of this is happening today? People are worried. People I've spoken to this morning, I mean, I just was out doing some, um, you know, administrative tasks of daily life, which does go on. But everybody I spoke to, you know, you ask how people are and they say, yeah, OK, you know, and then people are asking if they're leaving um, and wondering whether or not Kiev is really going to be targeted. Things have really, really changed since a few weeks ago when really the whole atmosphere in Kiev was one of being extremely confident that this city would not be attacked uh, and that there was uh, no risk at all. I think that you know, Vladimir Putin's speech yesterday really sent shivers down Ukrainians' Uh, spines. I mean, I don't know how many Ukrainians will have been watching that uh, press conference with uh, the Estonian president, but I think Volodymyr Zelensky does now have something of a task on his shoulders of being the leader of the country and at the same time reassuring Ukrainians and also assuring Ukrainians that he is going to take a strong stance, because that's definitely what the majority of people in this country uh, want him to do, is to take a strong stance. And perhaps that very short answer that he gave to the question from one journalist, what do you think about the uh, separatist leaders' calls for Ukraine to withdraw its troops? Um, and Volodymyr Zelensky just answered that extremely curtly and quickly. Um, we don't speak to those people. We don't know who they are. I think that's the kind of thing Ukrainians want to hear. All right. Thanks so All much right. for that, Gulliver. Gulliver Craig, they're reporting for us from Kiev.